Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hey, today we've got a quick micro video for you, an update. We were doing some maintenance this week, and we wanted to talk about the Gigabyte Z270P-D3 mining motherboard. This has been a staple in the mining community for years, and it's been a board that I have used and I can recommend for sure. It's been very stable, love the board, great price point, all that good stuff. We we're doing a BIOS update on this this week. We wanted to talk about that and some things that you should look out for if you haven't done a BIOS update on this board. And then also we are working on a six or seven card build for you with the MSI 1660Ti. And I need to update you guys on a few things there. So stick around, let's talk about it, here we go. Hey Raptors, welcome back. So like I mentioned, We've run this Gigabyte board in the past, actually for quite a while now, and again, been very, very happy with it. I've been running this with a 1060 rig I have here in the studio. Uh, it's been a six card build. You've seen it in some videos here on the channel. And I've been moving some cards around. I've gotten in a lot of new inventory. We've got a lot of fun new projects that are coming for you guys. And uh, we decided to reuse this motherboard in a 1660 Ti build. I decided to do an update on the BIOS. When I had first installed this, maybe over a year ago, um, we just used the BIOS out of the box and had zero issues mining on it. It was very stable, no problems whatsoever. Loved, um, loved this board and all that it was doing for us. Now that being said, when we were updating this mining rig and putting on some new cards, I decided to update the BIOS. And if you're going to update this, I'll leave a link in the show notes below. But you're going to come out here to the Gigabyte website, and this is what I wanted to cover for you guys real quick. There's some basic information. I guess this was probably built a year or maybe even two years ago. What is Bitcoin? And for folks, there, it sounds like just getting into mining. Uh, so you're going to have to kind of scroll down through all of this. And what you're going to want to do is come down here to the bottom, and you will see a list of BIOSes that are available. And these are all the Gigabyte... Um, mining BIOS updates. Now, before you grab one of these, let me say this. If you bought this board new and it's working fine out of the box, I always recommend, especially for folks that are new in mining, do not update the BIOS at all. If everything's working fine, just leave it be um, and then be happy with life, move on to another project. Uh, because things can go south real quick. You can actually brick your motherboard if you do it wrong, or even if you do everything right, sometimes weird stuff happens during a BIOS update. So just be aware of that. If it's working fine, leave it alone. But if you're eager to go out there and give things a try, it's this min.f8a for the Z270P-D3 that you're going to want to get. And when you go to install this, they have some instructions here on the website and I wanted to walk you through because we just did this some things you need to be aware of when you're BIOS modding so for example here the instructions at the very beginning on the website talk about um, where you need to go in the Q flash utility so as your system boots up you're gonna hit the delete key and you're gonna go into the BIOS and you're gonna see the Q flash utility you're gonna enter that and you're gonna see this option to update your BIOS. And after selecting that, you're gonna see your BIOS over here on the right side of the screen. You're just gonna click on that, move along, and again, we're still fine here with the instructions that they're given, no problems. You're gonna select that it's intact and you're gonna run the update. Now this is gonna take a couple minutes. It's probably gonna um, tell you that you need to reboot your machine. And when it comes back up, you're gonna verify the BIOS version. And you just wanna make sure that it says that MIN-F8A to make sure that the BIOS was updated. Now, this is where I wanted to point out a couple of things real quick. Once you get into this BIOS, in their screenshots, they're showing that this mining mode is here and that you should enable that. Um, I, this is an older screenshot you can see here from 6-26-2017. And that option is no longer available. I'm not sure when that got pulled. Maybe some of you that have done updates before on these mining BIOSes uh, may know the answer to that. But uh, you're not going to see this in here, and that's okay. You do want to follow the rest of these instructions with one quick change I want to note for you guys. So here in step two, they've got disable the CSM option for UEFI mode OS. 
Now, if you're using something like a Linux distribution, you actually want to leave this enabled. So for example, I'm using uh, Hive OS on a USB drive. And if I don't have this enabled, then I will not boot. The system will constantly reboot and come back into the BIOS. So you want to make sure that CSM is enabled. It took me about 20 minutes to figure that one out of uh, restarting over and over again. So make sure that's enabled and you'll be able to boot into Linux from your USB drive. Now, the other thing here, it tells you the max link speed. It does need to be set to Gen 2. Just be aware though, I've seen in forums out there that folks that have said that they've been having trouble with, whether it's cards or risers or something like that, that troubleshooting moving this back to Gen 1 has solved issues for them. It worked fine on Gen 2 for me, but just be aware of that. And then here, this is correct. You want your initial display output to be IGFX, and you want above 4G decoding enabled. And you're going to change the internal graphics setting from auto to enabled. And then the rest of this, you can follow these steps if you're booting into Windows and all of that's pretty straightforward once you get the uh, operating system up and going. Now, if you do have problems with that mining BIOS, you can also jump over to their standard BIOS updates that they have. I'll put a link to this in the show notes as well, but you can download the F8 version, which is the standard motherboard version all the way back to F7. I believe I was running like an F6A prior that ran fantastic for me for about a year. Um, so I'll have that in the show notes below. And then lastly, the thing that really frustrated me I wanted to update you guys on was the 1660 Ti working with this board. So like I said, for maybe a year I had my 1060s running on this board with no problem. And my thought was that I wanted to update those. I was going to repurpose my 1060s somewhere else, and I was going to throw these 1660 Ti's on there. Before I did any BIOS mods or anything like that, started putting these cards on there and found that they just do not work on this board. It, it does not work at all. And so for the better part of a day, I started pulling my hair out and changing out riser cards. I was updating the BIOS. I did everything that I could possibly think of to try to get these cards to work. And at times I could get one to work, maybe two, maybe three, and I thought I was making progress and I thought I had it solved. And then uh, everything just started going wacky. I started moving backwards from there. So at the end of the day, here's what I want to tell you guys. So for now, I can tell you, at least with my experience, the MSI 1660Ti does not work with this Gigabyte Z270P motherboard. Um, I have a ticket open with Gigabyte, so we'll see if they make any plans to support the 1660Ti in the future. I put my 1060s back on there and they work just fine, even with the updated BIOS with the updated risers, all that good stuff. Everything's working fine, but for some reason this board just doesn't like the 1660 Ti. Now that being said, you know we're a big fan of the efficiency of that card here on this channel. So before you start any new builds, do some Googling around out there, maybe uh, hit, hit our comments, see if any other users have had success with a board before you start a new build, especially with anything that's not in that GTX 10 series line of cards. Because you don't want to get all that equipment in and then do what I did and you waste a day or two <laughs> trying to troubleshoot and backpedal and try to figure out what's going on. Um, I've had luck with the H110. You saw the 13 card build we have there. Uh, we got a couple of GPU driver errors with that. We'll update you on that in an upcoming video. But not to get off on a tangent, uh, the H110 is a board that I can recommend with the 1660 Ti's. It's worked well for me. We've got a couple new boards in that we're going to give a try and we will continue to update you on the results. But we just wanted to get a quick, uh, like I said, sort of a micro update out here today to let you know the results we were seeing with the Gigabyte E270P. So if you have any luck, any insight, if you've gotten 1660 Ti's or any of the new RTX line working on any of these uh, boards that are that are often used in the mining community, please leave that in the comments below. We're all just trying to help each other out. We'd love to share those success stories and it just helps us all build up the community. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Leave a comment below. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Good monkey life.